Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of interpreting exponential functions. This is standard A.9b in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 18 off the 2019 released star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we've got a bank account earning annual compound interest. And we have a balance here after x years can be modeled with this exponential function. Hopefully we keyed in on this term compound interest because that is not new. We learned all the way back in seventh grade and we got the same thing again in eighth grade that we can find compound interest with this formula. A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power. And so now we're dealing with the same thing, which we could use this actual formula, but I want to relate it to our exponential functions. Right? So what does each of these terms mean? Well, that P is going to be your principal. So that's your initial starting amount, right? So that's typically what that constant is. How much money did you start with? And since we're dealing with compound interest, typically they're going to say something like this. There's no additional deposits or withdrawals because if they keep making deposits or they withdraw the money, that P is going to change and you have to recalculate. That's all that means. And then you would get this times 1 plus this R is going to be your rate. So that's going to be your interest rate. So let's say your interest rate is 10%. Well, we would need to, if we want to multiply that, right, we'd need to change that into a decimal, so 0 0.1 or 0 0.10. But if we calculated it that way, we would just find the amount of interest earned. We wouldn't figure out how much money we had. Uh, we would just find the interest earned, and then we would need to add the original back in. Well, there's this neat little trick. If you just add 1 to that rate, 1.1, this one right here keeps the initial principle in the calculation. So at the end, if you multiply by 1.1, you would just get the new total amount and you wouldn't have to have that second addition at the end. So that's that rate. And then this t is going to be your time. So typically compound interest is calculated yearly. Sometimes it's monthly. Sometimes it could be another time frame. So how does that stack up with what we have here? Well, y equals ab to the x power. That is our, just our standard algorithm, that our standard function that we're going to use when we're dealing with exponents here. And this a is going to be our principal. So that's going to be our initial starting amount. This b is simply this right here, 1 plus r. So that's your rate. But we are assuming it's 1 plus the decimal, so we can keep that initial amount, and then your x is still going to be your time. So it's the same exact thing. All they did is, in Algebra 1 here, we just take your 1 plus r, we just collapse it to a b right there. All right, so let's see what we have here. We've got 850, so b of x, 850, 1.025 to the x power. So this is going to be our principal starting amount. Now this rate here is going to be 1.025. So what we need here is we need to uh, first take away the 1, 0.025 to calculate the rate. And then we need to make that into a percent, move it over twice. All right, so 2.5% is your interest rate. And then the x is just the number of years. That's a time period. So let's see which statement best represents this. All right, so the initial balance of the amount decreases. Now we're increasing because it's greater than 1. It decreases if it is less than 1. It's going to decrease. In this case, it's going to increase. The balance increases at a rate of 2.5. That's what we just said. The initial balance, nope, was 850. And the balance at the end of the year, nope, that's at the beginning. So our answer here is G.